And what we do, our B back, our offensive line is back off the football. Okay, so the offensive line comes up and they put their, I, I let them put either hand down, and they put their hand down three feet wide so that their hand is on the top of the center's shoelace. The top shoelace on the center, not toward his toe, toward his ankle. Okay, and that should make it where their ear hole is even with the center's belt buckle. Being, breaking the center's belt buckle necessitates whether they're on the line of scrimmage or not. Okay? So our offensive line's back off the ball. When I was at Auburn, uh, I coached on offense a couple of years with uh, Alex Gibbs, who was later one of the famed uh, gurus of zone blocking in the NFL. And so that's how I learned how to zone block. And also, he liked to have the offensive line back off the ball. Too bad he can't get the center back off the ball. But you can get the guards and tackets back off the ball so they don't feel crowded. Because you get up there on the offensive guard, he gets a three technique or anymore a two technique, and he feels a little bit crowded. Okay? So what we do different than a wishbone theory is the B back, we're back off the ball, the B back steps with his right foot on the triple option, we're going to the right, and he runs the mesh, the inside leg of the guard. Okay, and he's got a high soft fold, inside high soft fold. But what he does, the quarterback's read is the first down lineman in the B gap out, which we'll get a little bit more into that in a minute. But the B back reads the first down lineman inside the quarterback's read. So basically, I don't have a three technique drawn up here right now. But what I'm saying is, if a wishbone team for the majority of the time has a three technique, then they'll combo the three. They'll have a drive, a post player, a drive player and a drive player, okay? They'll have somebody that's going to punch the three technique and try to knock him off the ball. They'll have somebody really double him from the outside. It's not a situation where you teach half and half, where you're trying to take half a man. You got a drive player and a guy trying to help him knock him off the ball, and they're going to make the crease go outside. That's why in the wishbone, they like to let the quarterback toe into the line of scrimmage, and he missed less reads doing that. Now, there's nothing wrong with wishbone football or that philosophy either. Okay, so that's a little bit of the formation. It's a little bit of the splits. Uh, our, our quarterback, our B-backs heels line up about five yards from the front tip of the football. If you do get a slow B-back or one that's maybe younger than not his first step's not quite as quick as it needs to be, but he's going to be quicker after he goes to win a workout, you can put him at four and three quarter yards from the front tip of the ball. Okay, so that's kind of the difference between wishbone football and the type of football we run. The other thing is the quarterback, after he pulls the ball, we can do is a flash type read. And we try to read the read the number one by the time the quarterback, while the ball reaches the quarterback's front foot. And then if he pulls the ball, then he wants to get, if he sees an area, I say, if you can drive your smart car through there after you get past number one and number two skating outside, which will get into the count system just in a minute, then he can go downhill and he can be a runner. So the quarterback's a little bit more of a runner, and over time what will happen is the guy responsible for the quarterback will squeeze down inside and he'll start trying to take the, quarter, he'll start trying to take the quarterback rather than the hang and break. Okay, and one of the reasons why is because the B-back's running at the inside leg of the guard, and that's the path that he's running. 